Hey, it's Eddie from Rising Block, and I'm back with another trading video. In this video, we're going to talk about absolute momentum trading. First, we're going to discuss what is absolute momentum, the pros and cons, how to calculate it, how to code it, how to backtest, and we'll look at the performance of the strategy across some historical data. Lastly, we'll discuss some next steps to improve the strategy. So what is absolute momentum? Absolute momentum looks at an asset's own performance and excess returns across time. Pros and cons. It's an extremely simple trading strategy. It's also very simple to code. Another pro is that the strategy is able to minimize losses in a bear market. Some of the cons. It only looks at its own asset's performance and it's hard to select a look back period that is optimal. So let's talk about how to calculate absolute momentum. In this example, we're going to use a look back period of two days. So we have five days of pricing data here from May 1st to May 5th. To calculate the momentum of May 1st and May 2nd, we would need pricing data from April, but we have enough data to calculate the momentum on May 3rd. The calculation is a simple percentage change calculation. So we can see from May 1st to May 3rd, there's a negative 30% decrease in price. For May 4th, we can look at 500 to 800, and we can see there's about a 60% gain. For May 5th, we can look at 700 to 900, and we can see there's about a 28% gain. Now, let's look at how we can code this simple algorithm. All right, so let's code this algorithm out. So for the initialize function, we're going to use Bitcoin in this example. So we can do symbol Bitcoin to the US DT. We want to initialize a counter at zero. And we want to have a Boolean variable that tells us if we're currently holding Bitcoin or not. I'll initialize that to false for now because we're not holding Bitcoin at the beginning. Next for our handle data function, we want to set the look back window. And for this example, we'll set it to 20, 20 days. Then we need to skip bars until we can calculate absolute momentum. So we need to skip about 20 bars here, right? So we can increment our counter. like so. So basically this will count up until it's 20 and when it's less than 20, our, the rest of the code won't execute. Then we want to get the historical data of Bitcoin. So we can do data.history, um, our asset. We want the price. Um, we need 20 bars. so. So that the look back window and the frequency, we want to set it to one day. Next, we need to calculate the percentage change. And we want to set that to the history, percentage change, or the look back window, minus one, which will give us the percentage change of the entire uh, pandas array here, but we only want the last values and we just negative one here Then we want to multiply that by a hundred to get percentage instead of a decimal value and then we can Just put the price in a more convenient variable here Now for the, the trade trading logic So basically we just want to buy if the percentage change is greater than zero, sell otherwise. So how do we do this? We can just do an if statement, if percentage change is greater than zero, and we're not holding already, then we want to order Bitcoin. So with order target percentage, it basically means to order our entire portfolio. If I set it to one, it means 100%. So we want to basically buy all the Bitcoin we can afford. 
else if we're holding already then we want to sell all our Bitcoin so we want the target percentage to be zero and then we can set the holding here is equal to false and we set the holding here equal to true Lastly, we want to record all this data so we can graph it later. So we do record price is equal to price. We want cash is equal to context.folio.cash. And percentage change is equal to percentage change. That's it. So the algorithm is quite simple. I'll go over it again. We set our look back window to 20 days here. We skip the first 20 bars, so we can calculate absolute momentum. Then we look at the last 20 bars and we're able to calculate the percentage change. Our trading logic is basically if the percentage change is positive, we're gonna buy, if the percentage change is negative, we're gonna sell. I wrote a, some graphing here to help visualize it. I'll post this code on risingblock.com, but I won't go through it now. I do have a graphing tutorial on the website. But let's just try to run this algorithm. So I'm gonna run it on historical data of Bitrex, and I'm gonna run it on the days of 2017, September 20th to 2018, March 23rd. And we'll just give that a run. Yeah, we're looking good here. So I'll explain what this graph does right now. So the top graph, here is our portfolio's value in US dollars. The second from the top is Bitcoin to USD, the basically the price of Bitcoin. The other one is how much cash we have on hand at any given time. And the last one is our percentage change, essentially measuring momentum. So in this bottom graph for momentum, I color coded it so when there's positive momentum, the graph is green, and when there's negative momentum, the graph is red. So you can see during 2018, there's that big drop here and it seemed to recover a little bit here, but then it's dropping again. And then the X's on this graph here represent our transactions. So when there's positive momentum, remember we're gonna buy. So you can see the first X here is probably because we bought here. And then the, when there's negative momentum, we're gonna sell. So you can see another X up here when we sold because it's negative momentum. Here's a bunch of X's because I'm guessing the momentum probably shifted very quickly here up and down, so our algorithm didn't know what to do. So it just followed what what we told it to do, and there's like a lot of X's here. So that's something we want to sort of like smooth out. Ideally, we might choose a different look back range, maybe like 30 days or 25 days. It's hard to decide, but we don't want this to happen because this many transactions, every time you do a transaction, you have to pay a market fee, right? So. It would be ideal if there's just one X here, one X here, one X here, one X here, one X here. Um, and then here you can see the momentum went positive again, we bought another X here. And then the momentum went negative again, we got another X here. And you can see that reflected in our portfolio's value. So you see when we sell our portfolio flat lines because we're holding cash and not holding Bitcoin, so we're not subject to the market fluctuations. Um, here it didn't seem like it didn't do too bad. Even with all these transactions, our portfolio value only dropped very slightly. And then a flat line because we were holding cash. And then again, we fluctuate a bit because we've entered the market. We're holding Bitcoin, goes up, we sell. And then flat lines again. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about some strategies that we can make this algorithm better. One of them is relative momentum. And then further down the line, I'll create a video on dual momentum to show you guys how to combine relative momentum and absolute momentum together. If you guys like this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Full code will be on risingblock.com. Thank you guys for watching.